Dear friends, dear colleagues, nice to meet you. I am Ramin Leib from Azerbaijan. I am an Azerbaijan national who works and lives in Azerbaijan. I teach various legal subjects at one of the universities and I I am a lawyer by profession. I uh, own the Facebook page called Timet News. Uh, I uh, prepare and share various materials regarding uh, science, history, travel, heritage, etc. on that Facebook page. Uh, not long ago, I made a decision to read uh, several interesting books and make uh, reviews regarding uh, interesting moments moment of those who please don't hesitate to like and comment on my videos and also I ask you kindly to subscribe to my YouTube channel thank you very much in advance for that and today I have uh, decided to uh, come with an interesting novel dedicated to to the life in Azerbaijan uh, in early uh, 19. Uh, I'm talking about the novel titled Blood and Oil in the Orient. Um, the author of this novel is Mohammed Asetbay. Maybe uh, many of you haven't heard about Mohammed Asadbay. Of course, I mean uh, our foreign colleagues, our foreign uh, friends and book lovers who live in other countries. Many uh, book lovers who live in Azerbaijan, they already know Mohammed Asadbay. They know who he is. Um, Mohammed Asadbay is one of the pen names that belongs to uh, famous Azerbaijani uh, uh, author, writer of Jewish origin, Lev Nissenbaum. Uh, one of his pen names, pen names is Kurban Said. Under the pen name of Kurban Said, uh, Lev Nissenbaum wrote the bestseller titled Ali and Nino, which is a fantastic, fascinating love. Uh, novel uh, and not only the love uh, story uh, so this novel uh, has also been dedicated to the life of Azerbaijan in the beginning of the 20th century um, I must uh, admit saying that I have decided to divide this video uh, review into several parts in other words this book review this novel review will come in a series so today i'm going to uh, demonstrate the first part of it which i'm um, which i have uh, titled as living and working in azerbaijan in the beginning of the 20th century conditions or circumstances and the other parts will come further in the forthcoming uh, weeks um, by the way the author claimed that sometimes in the past when he was alive he claimed that um, <clears throat> this author was a kind of autobiographic novel he uh, claimed that in fact this novel describes his own life and we may trace a couple of patterns uh, which proves that uh, proves the fact that uh, the author at least used several uh, scenarios from his own life uh, and I'll uh, uh, I'll bring into your attention uh, some of them uh, for example, uh, the, uh, the 
a novel starts with a screen uh, which took place, which takes place, which takes place in Baku. There is a famous, or not, let's do not use this word famous for prisons, but the well-known prison in Baku, which is called Bio Prison. Uh, Bio is a, is a kind of um, administrative division or territory located um, on the coast of the Caspian Sea, uh, on the entrance part of the city and there was a, a prison and there is a prison at the time being there so one of the rich oil magnates uh, local uh, local oil magnates um, uh, is uh, walking uh, in the garden uh, uh, in, located in front of the bio prison suddenly Somehow he notices a beautiful blonde lady looking out of the window, out of uh, the window uh, of the uh, one of the prison rooms. Somehow, uh, by the way, there is a, uh, a kind of garden, uh, in fact, located just in front of the bio prison. So. Uh, he falls in love with this lady and he decides to take him out of the prison and declare his love to her. Uh, by the way, um, the author uh, claims that uh, there was no ground for politics at that time on the whole territory of um, Azerbaijan, including Baku city. In fact, there was no ground for politics uh, in whole Russia, neither. So, we know we cannot speak about human rights, we cannot speak about uh, human freedom, because the events um, uh, take place in the beginning of the 20th century. So um, each time frame does have, does possess its own characteristic features, um, circumstances vary from time to time, etc. Uh, so there was no any ground for political activities and when this rich local oil magnate decide to take her the prisoner, the lady, woman prisoner, out. Um, the, the, the guard says that no, we cannot let her out. We cannot free her because she has committed a kind of political offense somewhere in Russia, and she has been exiled to Baku. Uh, uh, she has been sentenced to uh, certain period of for a certain period of. Um, imprisonment but um, the uh, our hero our hero says uh, in Baku at that time uh, the governmental officials preferred not to get into conflict with the local magnates because they were rich people they had their own troops so they could um, let's say punish anyone uh, who um, tried to make obstacles for them therefore the father of our hero um, uh, as he falls in love with this beautiful charming lady and the guard the, uh, the, the, the guardians prefer not to get into conflict with him so he pays the bribe some amount of money and they let the lady uh, leave, to leave the prison this uh, rich young man negotiated um, successfully with the vile prison guard pays bribe uh, frees the lady and they get married uh, unfortunately 
when our hero reaches just the age of two three, his mother commits suicide. There is a uh, coincidence with um, the own life of the author of the novel. Uh, there are uh, some information uh, regarding the uh, life of his mother. According to some uh, sources, uh, the mother committed the, the mother of the author committed suicide as well uh, at the age uh, when her son Lev Nissenbaum reached the age of two or. Um, and uh, what was the reason for that? What was the reason that the lady committed uh, suicide? Well, according to rumors, she was um, Bolshevik. She was recruited by some um, Bolshevik uh, activists, and they tried uh, to use her against the government. Uh, as her husband was a rich one, he was a rich professional engineer. So they tried to use this chance. They they they, they tried to use uh, not only her but uh, her husband as well against the government. Uh, she got depressed. She was spiritually oppressed. Uh, she got into stress and uh, she committed uh, suicide. That, 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 that is the story behind the, uh, this screen, uh, behind this uh, event, which also occurs in the novel, in the very introductory part. And, uh, well, um, uh, apparently, um, our hero uh, draws uh, the reader's attention to a number of interesting facts about the life in Oil Baku at that time. First of all, according, our, to, uh, according to our hero, um, uh, Baku is a kind of uh, location or place on which unwritten laws always prevail over written, written laws, so statutory laws. And um, he describes Baku as, um, as an attractive Eastern Old City, but uh, he enumerates a number of awful facts which um, took place in Baku in the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, according to our hero, the oil magnets always won if they um, somehow got themselves in a conflict with the governmental authorities. So they uh, did not usually obey to the prescriptions or instructions deriving from the written law of the Russian Empire. And our hero describes the oil, oil magnates as cruel, uh, you may not believe, but it's in fact uh, written in the novel uh, like that, bloodthirsty managers. Uh, we learn from him that the uh, autocratic methods of administration always prevail in the oil fields. So you may be a professional um, engineer, but it's not enough. Uh, th this means almost nothing in practice. This means, no me means almost nothing on the field. He says, in, I I I'm, I'm going to read uh, a passage from the book uh, on this topic. So he says, no knowledge and no study will train the man properly if he has not the innate disposition to be an autocratic ruler, who must at times be executioner too. So that means if you are uh, an oil uh, field um, professional, in particular if you own 
an oil field uh, or if you are a professional engineer it's not enough to know how to take uh, or extract oil from the oil the rigs uh, and it's not enough to guard the oil obtained uh, from uh, from the seas uh, you must be able to use these um, unbelievably cruel methods of punishment in order to bring your enemies to their knees so if you are an oil magnate you will have a lot of enemies who will try to uh, continuously to kill you to rob you or to steal the uh, oil that you have obtained from the oil rig so you must sleep with open eyes uh, and probably because of this reason our hero describes the oil fields as one of the most awful places in the world for working and living uh, he even draws a line between a penitentiary and an oil field. Uh, I'm citing his uh, famous sentence from the novel. The only difference between a penitentiary and an oil field was that in a penitentiary the food was more edible. So just imagine if you had been uh, put into prison if you have been in prison, in prison for a certain amount of time, for certain years, for 10 years, 15 years, uh, the meat served you in, in, in the penitentiary is of much more high quality. If you work in, the, in an oil field, then uh, the, the, the food offered is not edible. Uh, just imagine the difference uh, and try to bring the real situation um, uh, be before your eyes. In order to describe the real situation, our hero um, cites a famous Russian proverb widespread among the Russian merchants who lived and worked uh, um, or traveled to Baku at that time. Uh, he um, thought that such a uh, miser miserable or awful situation was the fault of um, of the oil uh, owners. So uh, the Russian proverb says, uh, which was widely spread among the business people at that time who lived in Baku, who worked in Baku or who because of their business uh, uh, kept very close contact with Baku, they traveled a lot to Baku and from Baku to other places. So th this, this Russian proverb said that whoever has lived a year among the oil owners of Baku can never again become a decent person. Um, we are talking about oil owners. There were local Azerbaijani oil owners. So uh, the second category of oil owners were the foreigners, were the, those people who came from other countries. They were professional engineers, they were well experienced people in this field. One of them uh, was Rothschild. So what was the attitude of the local Azerbaijan oil magnate to the uh, foreign oil magnate? Well, um, in fact, I do not know whether it is true or not, but our hero narrates an unbelievable story about one of the uh, few foreign oil owners, uh, namely Rothschild. This story, uh, according to our hero, took place in Baku. So uh, when uh, Rothschild arrived in Baku, so he, 
let's let's imagine uh, a young rich foreigner professional oil um, uh, <coughs> field engineer or the person who is um, experienced enough in this field he arrives in Baku uh, Baku is let's imagine is full of the young brave shooters and killers they were called coaches so in fact uh, coaches were male fighters they implemented the the, the, the function of security uh, they were guards they served different rich people um, oil engineers um, owners of the oil the rigs all rich people trade tradesmen etc they protected these various rich noble people from the attacks of other um, uh, bandits uh, clans etc Rothschild briefly summarizing Rothschild arrives in Baku he is uh, offered by the by 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 uh, by some groups of the coaches um, that they offer them um, their service they agree to protect him to ensure his security physical security for some reasons Rothschild does not accept this uh, uh, offer and uh, starting from that night he faces numerous systematic attacks by the realized by the coaches themselves so the coaches or the the, 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 the people who sent by the coaches start uh, destroying a Rothschild's property uh, uh, robbing stealing something etc so they use different methods to damage Rothschild's property uh, Rothschild realizes that he made a mistake and he tries to um, negotiate with the local coaches the circumstances he, 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 he tries to um, recruit several coaches in order to ensure his physical and his property's physical security but this time coaches uh, do not accept his um, uh, let's say a kind of offer easily and they try to get more salary they require double salary for protecting for protecting Rochi and his product now we can come to the conclusion that Baku of the 9th 19, Baku of the 19th uh, is apparently ruled by a cruel principle dictating homo, homo homini uh, lupus est. So there was a society, uh, and that society was in the situation of war of everyone against everyone or against all so like the wolves people were ready to um, uh, kill each other anytime our according to our author uh, the persons lost uh, could not be found anymore their relatives uh, could not succeed in finding the poor victim uh, because uh, some bandits threw the victims into the shaft oil shaft and that was all uh, so if those bandits who stole the victims and killed them if they were on good terms with the engineer or with the owner of the oil field they just 
throw uh, they just throw the uh, dead bodies into the oil shaft and that was all there was a kind of stratification of the Baku society at that time in other words the society in Baku was or could could be put into several categories workmen second engineers third owners well rich people who owned oil fields who owned uh, some property who owned uh, shops etc bazaars for government officials and uh, the fifth category included the rest of the population in particular the poor uh, population workmen were divided um, into two groups as well European workmen so workmen of the European origin and non-European workmen the first category uh, included um, experienced Russian workmen they came from Russia and our hero describes them as the uneasy group of professionals those Russian workmen despite the native local workmen they demanded double wages and they constant, uh, constantly uh, they constantly threatened to strike so the uh, local oil magnate in particular didn't like the European or Russian workmen but they did not have a choice because they needed professional um, uh, group of people who knew very well what to do how to be behave what activity um, or what activities uh, they should uh, take under specific circumstances and here we find uh, another interesting fact about uh, one of the most controversial uh, persons in the history our author uh, or our hero uh, reminds us one of the revolutionists or revolutionaries uh, he reminds us Joseph uh, Jugashvili well our hero mentions several facts from his past he describes his place he describes even his character somehow uh, so I'm trying to read a passage another passage from um, from the novel about Jugashvili. Uh, uh, so he is son of a shoemaker from Tiflis, a former divinity student who then had had just escaped from a Siberian penitentiary. He had a low forehead, a crooked nose, and small evil eyes which had seen much murder much murder and much blood he was joseph the famous terrorist who now calls him stalin our hero describes yosef yosarianovich stalin well according to our hero stalin was at that time the editor of a revolutionist newspaper called the Bo Workman of Baku in Azerbaijan it is called Baku Pehlesi the Workman of Baku uh, what about the governmental authorities what did they do so let's analyze what our hero says on this occasion so the major task of all governmental structures and high-level officials including the general governor um, their major task was professionally supervise all these happenings 
and uh, they refrain from interfering absolutely and they protected the interests of the magnate they even legitimized all illegal acts committed by the uh, rich people all magnates the state authorities knowingly or unknowingly directly or indirectly but of course systematically and continuously engaged in turning young talented and hard-working people youth um, into first first of all cruel and uh, first for revenge revolutionaries so the government officials just closed their eyes they did nothing they created favorable conditions under which normal people became revolutionaries but let us now discuss um, uh, positive things regarding the life and work in Baku at that time first of all Baku our author describes the city and he says that he shows us with bright examples that Baku was one of the most advanced in the region uh, of the entire East so it presented all features of a large European industry you could find diesel motors electric light a motor car countless machines etc in Baku at that time secondly our hero describes Baku as a place on which cultures replace previous cultures in fact uh, he does not say that this situation is attributable uh, attributed to only to Baku in fact he doesn't say that this situation is characteristic only for Baku he uh, generalizes the situation he says that in many places in many regions of the world you may uh, face with the similar situation uh, when one culture uh, one cultural cultural layer is uh, replaced by the other so he makes a short excursion to history uh, he says that the mosques are usually built where the Christian church stood the church also rose upon the ruins of the Greek Roman temple the latter uh, stood on the old temples of some Babylonian deity the Babylonians used to build their temples on the uh, sites of the mysterious sanctuaries of the Sumerian cult etc according to our hero the more the, 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 even the mosques uh, are disappearing in early 19s in Baku and in their place factories have risen which serve the most modern of all deities and thirdly uh, our author uh, claims that Azerbaijan is not only Baku um, not everything in Azerbaijan is ruled by oil and the situation in Baku cannot be attributed to whole Azerbaijan where Baku uh, and the oil desert uh, and the railroad end there begins a terra incognita well unknown territory where the, where, where the Baku end where the Baku territories uh, end there starts the rest of the Azerbaijan which is uh, terra in, in, incognita or some kind of unknown territories and our, also our hero reminds us that the population of Azerbaijan is highly diverse colorful and tolerant he particularly reminds uh, well as an example Isors regarded as the last descendant of the old Assyrian 
and who speak uh, a Semitic uh, dialect and are of uh, decidedly Semitic uh, origin. Uh, for the first part or for the first series, I think it is enough. See you on our next series. Bye for now.